do I know what I do in my life, what kind of food I eat is irrelevant, you know, it's the yeah. focus now, and believe me, if people were really passionate, that is, they wouldn't need to be told this. Right now we're in a very, very dark place in the world, and not just with me, but with all of these people. You see so much of this banter back and forth on various forums and chat rooms and YouTube about oh, all these people's personal lives, Alex and me and, and whoever else, but the point is I take offense against that, not because it's an invasion in my personal private space, but secondly, what are you thinking? You know, what has that person got time to wonder about, well, you know, what, uh, that I'm wearing a leather jacket or, you know, who I might be hanging out with or, you know, wh whatever it might be, or I'm smoking a cigarette. You know, is that where your concern is when I am sitting there going to my wit's end to put out information that is absolutely radical in this world? See, it tells me where that person's focus is, that they got time to chew bubblegum over that, but they're not even making a single comment or interest in the actual work, the deep meat of the material of what we're talking about. And that, I don't have time for people like that. But even more than that, you know, it's just I don't, I don't think my life is very interesting to people, so I you know, don't go into it. What I would say is that I do believe that people should study meditation, study what system works for them, really research these subjects, they're very interesting, and then come to their own conclusions about what works for them, absolutely. I think they should be absolutely studying all of these different things with an open mind to find out what works for them, you know. But okay. see, here's, the other, here's another reason. If I say, yes, I do, then people gormlessly go, well, if he does it, I'm going to try it. See, so now I'm a dictator. Now I'm an authority that yeah. just because yeah. Michael meditates or Michael's into Buddhism, you know, Michael's into this, they rush off and, you know, this is the way the world is. I'm sorry, it happens. And if I say, no, I'm not into that, then they drop it, when in fact it might be a very good thing for them. Everybody's waiting for Big Daddy, the authority figure, to say, here's what I do in my life. Our world is full of this nonsense. And then we want to do the same thing. The sheep of mentality at work again. Yes, exactly. And I'm not into that at all, you know. I'm not into that at all. It's really something I personally despise in life when I see it myself. Uh, not to mention, that's not to say I don't have my heroes, I do. But when it becomes very overt, where people are literally copying, you know, this is the whole Oprah Winfrey scenario we're into. You know, I'm not into that. I'm into making people free in their minds to be able to go and say, who am I? Okay. Michael, because we like to run a, a, a balanced show, we, we, we don't want to dictate it to people, uh, another, another comment has come in, which I'm going to just read out anyway, and you can, you, you can comment on it, but it's, it's, uh, it just says, uh, Come on, lads, these guys, Ike, Maxwell, Tessarian, are all NWO agents. How come all videos exposing them are being removed uh, from the net? And then uh, there's another question following that. Are you referring to, uh, to Chris White? And uh, so they say yes, and uh, Chris White is a religious zealot. So I don't know if you have any comments on, on, on that one. He's coming on the show, by the way, Chris White. Okay. <laughs> Just in case, <laughs> if you look at the radio schedule, it'll actually see Chris White is coming on the show. Okie dokie. Right, okay. That's, um, oh. that's down the line. Um, uh, I say Michael probably have heard, has heard of Chris White anyway. Well, I have, of course, and I know that he's one of many people. When John Coleman, one of the greatest uh, conspiracy authors, was ever asked, uh, who has he, because remember he was XMI5, he's a person who came up against very, very senior opposition, extremely high level, higher level than you can imagine. But when he was asked about who his real opponents were, he mentioned only two groups, Christian right-wing fanatics like Chris White, uh, not Chris White specifically in Coleman's case, but that kind of creature, and the homosexual group, wow. elite homosexual you know, groups who are this cabal that run the rock and run the rap and uh, again if people aren't familiar with all of this of how powerful the homosexual networks are in the world along with this extreme right wing Christian fundamental group these people are the ones who will attack and fight us so they're either used by the Illuminati themselves or other more sinister groups to come after and try to debunk and try to you know misconstrue mostly importantly and then I'm not against it because I say look everyone should have the freedom to say what they want so it's where I draw the line is that they, of course, always try to get into your personal life and make personal, you know, uh, comments and, and, and stabs in the dark. And if they can't throw stones, you know, they'll throw sand in your eyes. These, again, are that group that I told you about earlier that stand in the way of true revelation. And because what they, they don't, they don't mess with me. I don't mind what they do. They have no effect on me. But what they do have an effect on is those good people who might be trying to come to my work or trying to understand what is going on, and then they get all lost in this confusion, you see. So it doesn't affect me directly, but it affects good people. It makes their job a lot harder. But again, you know, this is what you have to deal with. But if, I was to compare, if I was to compare the rubbish that they think they're doing towards me than what I've had in my personal life, it doesn't even show up. So they might as well waste their time. The opposition I've had from other sources 
far exceeds what they think they're ever doing to me. And in fact, they actually assist me in many ways. They look like chumps and I look fantastic. You know, the more rubbish they throw at me, the better I look. So keep it coming. So obviously, obviously you're... You're following your path, and these people who step in your way, I mean, at the end of the day, they're only going to end up looking like fools. But, uh, well, it's more than that, obviously. When they oh, accuse well. you of being a Mason or a Rosicrucian or a Templar, or what was the, they were saying, I work for the New World Order. I mean, I don't even really actually know even what that means. What, what, is, a, what is a New World Order agent exactly? You know, so, I mean, and the illogicism of it should be obviously, I shouldn't even have to even comment on it because the illogicism of it should be obvious to anyone with a logical mind. And Chris White doesn't have a logical mind, so that's why he spews out this rubbish and everybody listens to him. Yeah, you know, they, they buy into it because they're equally paranoid, fanatical, and, and basically spiritually lost. And all these, all these people are internet lice. They're internet parasites who have nothing better to do but ride on the coattails of people who are trying to get the truth out to people. But I will go more than that. I'm telling you directly that these people, as John Coleman has confirmed, work for or are in league with very powerful organizations who don't want to come after you directly because they expose themselves. So they send these uh, homosexual groups, powerful homosexual groups, and this Christian fundamental right wing. If you track back to any of the great minds who've spoken on these subjects, you will find that that is exactly the same coterie who try to take them out, or who try to, you know, um, uh, who try to stir up a lot of controversy. It's the same pattern, the same groups who are used in order to come in and try and misconstrue what you're talking about. It's not that my work is perfect and it doesn't have small errors here and there, but so does any science book. Every book, even technical book in a manual in a school, is having errata. You fix it, you change it. I, I collaborate a lot. So I get information from a lot of other people that updates my information or, or, or a person may correct something I've done. This is an ongoing process, a partly collaborative process. We're all looking for the truth. I've never set myself up as a master or an expert in anything. We're all discovering a very incredible thing together, you know, and we will make mistakes and we will break fingernails and we will, uh, you know, bite down on things that are not right. But who are these other so-called nobodies with no books, no DVDs, no clout coming in as if they're critics and all they are is low-class cynics? They don't even have any substantial knowledge about anything, not even the stuff that they're meant to be teaching themselves, and come in and dare to be commenting on my work. Who the hell are they? You know, we're, I never set myself up as any expert. I'm working with what I've got, the means what I've got, to create as much as I can, and if it turns people on, it's fine. And if it doesn't, you change the channel. Go on and study somebody else that you like better. So when you see this overt action, though, an overt action to try and scandalize and plagiarize and just completely boulderize good people trying to do great work, you know that that is not them just getting up of a day and thinking, you know, that's what I want to do. And when you map it out over the years, you find out that it's the same coterie, a very sinister coterie doing this to try and take people like me out. Well, they're not going to succeed. Um, but again, I don't necessarily go out to promote myself. You know, it's connected. Again, it undercuts what a lot of these other uh, critics, so-called critics of mine, you know, would say about me is I've never advertised myself. People, every interview, people have come to me. Everybody who buys my book, they come and find me somewhere. If I'm known, it's only because of other people spreading the word. I've never gone out there to heavily advertise myself. I don't have my own radio show or media network or anything like that. You know, I'm invited to places. From day one, it was like that. So I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. I'm not spreading any news. People come to me and take my knowledge, and then they go spread it. So how do my critics say, he's out there spreading this Luciferian whatever? I'm not spreading anything. I, I, I didn't even know that a single copy of any of my books or DVDs would sell. If they did, it's bec well, it's not out of my control, and it's a good thing. Should I be, you know... Uh, should I be ashamed about that? Absolutely not. If I'm admired by people who love my work and it's shining light on the meaning of their lives, who the hell is somebody else to come along and debunk that and say that that's a bad thing? You know, it's ridiculous. I'm not out there doing anything. And I can tell you again, as I've told many people, I belong to no associations. I belong to no cults. I despise all secret societies. My whole life has been dedicated to exposing secret societies. So like you said earlier on about the logic of debunking the reptilians, show me the evidence. Doesn't the same formula apply? If you're going to say that Michael Desarin is a spreader of such and such and such and he's working for the system, please show me your evidence. And when I say evidence, I don't mean wild ad hominem attacks on my person or just because I happen to live within three miles of the Rosicrucian Center in San Jose, I must be a Rosicrucian along with the other 500,000 people who also live within two miles of that location and this is what we're talking about. So, you know, that doesn't add up to any logical person. Show me the evidence. They can't show the evidence. Just because my mother knew some people in the so-called New Age movement, that makes me a New Age, New Age guru. 
and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. It goes on, doesn't it? People make up their own kind of. They they read into things, don't they, and just make up their own mind, and then Chinese whispers, and before you know it, there's a rumor going around, which is completely false. So again, right. show us show us the evidence. That's that's my motto. Um, well, what it does is it, it's going to separate the sheep from the goats, because what will happen then is again I say let them have the freedom to say what they want, but then what happens is the person who believes it sucks it all in. I prefer that they have nothing to do with my work. I'm not interested in changing their ways. If they want to remain Christian, let them remain Christian. I'm not after them. I am a scholar who points out inconsistencies in the Bible and in all religions and, and, and show the background. If you're into it, you're into it. If you, but I'm not against a person believing in Jesus. I'm not in, in any way telling person, nor have I ever, ever said okay, that well, somebody should not believe in Muhammad or somebody should not personally believe in the Christ. I've never, ever said that. But what I have always targeted is the institutions of religion that I believe are part of this you know, matrix of mind control. That's all I've said. Instead of joining hands and saying, you know, Michael, great work, you're right. And you certainly haven't uh, got in my personal faith. You're not in the way of my personal faith. In fact, you've even endorsed that on so, so many times you've said that you're not interfering with the private beliefs of private people. I've said that from the stage. I've said it on interviews and said it all over the place. You know, instead of being admiring a person for being like that, they're going to try and tear you down. Well, that shows who they are. That's the, uh, again, the sheep of mentality, the conformist um, mm -hmm. attitude. 